Hi guys, this is Cy from Sinai Software. Today we're going to do a brief overview of our Cyclone plugin for 3D Studio Max. So I'm just going to sort of touch and explain what it does. We'll do some more detailed um, videos in the future. So first of all, um, it's created under Geometry. In the drop down, go to Sinai Software and pick Cyclone. It is an object plugin. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is uh, We'll talk about the top here. Um, if Forensic will actually let you know if there's a newer version of download, and we encourage you that you do that. Um, generally, 90% of the time on updates, we're fixing little items or um, repairing problems with different, say, render engines or whatnot. So um, always, always sort of download the newest version if you can. All right, so first thing is we want to pick a spline. So under our objects here, we'll pick a spline. And then we're going to pick our uh, objects to di distribute. So I have some wooden planks here. So we'll just go through and we'll throw those in real quick. And because these are pretty much box, we can go into display mode and we'll just set this to bounding box. Um, there are quite a few different um, display modes. We have pyramid, um, bounding box, squirrel, if you tend to want to do these in squirrels, original object. Uh, in just the drawing lines, we have dots, uh, point cloud. So point cloud's gonna go, uh, because they're just boxes, you're not getting <laughs> too much of a point cloud on this. Uh, bounding box, which is just a, a rectangle or what, drawn lines of it. Uh, triangle, dots, and display of none. All right, so because this is such a simple piece of geometry, we're just gonna do bounding box here. All right, uh, right now it is displaying these objects in the order that I've put them in. So you can shift those around, like if you wanna move five up, you can, you know, you can move five back down. Uh, so you can shift them around here. Uh, we do have null objects, so if you want to throw in a null object, and what this will do is it will give you some blanks in between. And those are helpful if you're doing something like a parking lot, and you don't want every space filled, or, you know, there might be a lot of reasons that you use nulls. So I'm just going to remove the nulls for right now for what we're doing. Um, also, when you're adding objects, you can actually just open up your whole um, Get Geo list and uh, select a whole bunch of objects at once and just bring them in. All right, so for object spacing, um, this is a distance in between the objects. So that's what you're gonna work with um, sort of the spacing wise. Uh, we have a random pattern, which you can see that here, or an ordered pattern. Uh, we're gonna keep this in order right now. Uh, we have follow the spline. And we also have, and let me just go into the sub object mode of this spline. And I'll just move this up for a second. Uh, we have underneath here, we have spline orientation. And what that does is it uh, has the objects follow the spline themselves. If you don't have that on, they're just gonna go straight up and down. So let me just go back here. And we'll go back to spacing. All right, so we have these objects here spaced. And what we really wanted to do was sort of have a louver effect and not really generally a fence type look. So we can work on the transform of the objects themselves. So if we did turn all of them 90, now we have sort of that louvered effect. Now, if we wanted to go in and alter, alter and you have randoms as well, so you could go in between, say, 90 and 180, you know, and that'll give you a variation of this. Um, but in our case, just to sort of display this, we're gonna sort of talk about, you know, just the basics of this. Uh, mirror function, uh, that's generally used, uh, these numbers up here, everything in the transform is in between. It'll give you a random in between these two numbers. Uh, the mirror function will give you the, this or that. So if where this works really well is parking cars in a parking lot. So you either want them at zero or 180. And that way it would give you a good variation. And you can seed that as well. 
Um, we have an exclusion splines, and uh, th what this does is you can animate objects coming in or out. So if I was to just draw a line here, and this works basically on the Z axis. Um, so if I grab our plugin here and let's enable exclusion splines and we'll add it. Now, if I was to move this spline around, you're going to see stuff just disappears. Uh, so you could animate the spline growing in in different spots and put a whole bunch of splines in here and that'll give you a good animation of sort of things fading in or fading out. Um, we also have in our cyclone, we also, uh, let me just disable that for a minute. Um, we have camera clipping. Now, if you were to turn this on and right now have active view, it's gonna clip your scene even though you have no camera in the scene, it's going to use your viewport, your active view, or it'll use your select active camera. So if you were to um, say always upgrading your cameras to different cameras, you might not want to set this to a camera. You might want to set this to active camera. So you're making sure that you're using whatever camera you're sending to render, it's going to use. Uh, there's a viewport expansion. So what happens is if this is off the screen, and let's just do a quick render here. So if I run this out, um, stuff that's completely off the screen here is gonna start to, is gonna disappear. And the expansion view uh, will extend that. So it'll give you some objects off the screen to cast some shadows. Um, so that's what the uh, expansion does. So generally you want to take this up a little bit, but play around with it. You'll be able to see how it casts shadows on bigger objects or whatnot. So let's just disable that. Um, and then the last thing, actually um, I did forget something. You can go into individual objects here as well and change them. So say we go to box one and you just wanted to scale box one up. You can change uh, the individual objects themselves. So if you have something that's not quite right, you will need, you don't have to go back into find the original object and alter that. Um, so that's basically makes it just a little easier to go and work with. Um, we do have a color uh, texture uh, variation. And what that'll do is right now, uh, if I was to render this, they're all going to look the same. Actually, let me just put this little guy right back into its place. Scale to there. Okay. So in the texture and color variation, what this does is um, we're changing the, the value of, uh, it, it's basically we're putting, hey, a color correction on top of each object and rendering that out. So to save memory, um, you can cut this down on how many variation counts you want. So let's just set this to 12 for right now. And we'll turn up hue shift, saturation, brightness, and contrast. Now, if we were to render this, you can actually see that you're getting a massive amount of uh, color variation out of this. So hue shift is up way too much for wood and what we're looking at. So let's just turn this down quite a bit and we'll give this a, another render. So now we're getting a good variation out of our wood. So um, quite a bit of it. So it doesn't look like a repetitive pattern. And like I said, you can turn the variation count up, but probably for something like this, 12 is fine. It's gonna give you a good amount of variation. Uh, for cars and stuff like that, I mean, all these settings are a little different. We've been playing around with sort of what would be a good default. And we found just giving you the full range of some stuff is probably better than capping. You know, even though you'll set, sometimes you'll be using this and set this at very low values. Uh, it's nice to give people the full range anyway, um, in case they want to do something else. It, you know, it might be um, painted objects and you do want a good variation and hue shift. Uh, we do have a filtering, so say these were 
um, objects like cars and you had say a rubber material, glass material, car paint material, but you actually in the variation you only want to ver change the variation on the car paint. So you just put in car paint or whatever you name the material, add this in and that would be an include or an exclude. So um, that's pretty much it for the texture and color variation. Uh, you can export this out. You can export this out as, you know, once you've got this sort of set up and say you want this back into original objects, um, you can export this out as a single mesh or individual objects. So um, let's just export this out as multiple objects. There, they're all there, they're all set, and you can do whatever you want with them. So that is Cyclone and a brief overview. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it.